Hello and welcome to Photography with Emery, and this is part two of the HDR series. In this episode, I will be showing you how to edit HDR images using Photoshop to do some tonal mapping. So why don't we get started? Okay, so one of the first things, of course, that we need to do is to load up our images. So you can go File, Automate, Merge to HDR, which brings up this dialog box here. We can load files or files in a folder, but in my case, Files works. And I'm just going to locate the shots that I took for at the gazebo, which will work. And I actually do have a very overexposed image, which um, is great because it makes this sequence work quite well. And I select the images. I just held down Shift, so I've got six photos selected. I'll hit OK. And I will click the checkbox to attempt to automatically align the source images. Uh, that way, because I wasn't using a tripod, that way Photoshop will figure this out for me. And then I'll simply hit OK, and Photoshop will go through the process of aligning those images. Okay, so now that Photoshop has done the alignment, it loads uh, the images up on this dialog box here. Bit depth, definitely want to set that to uh, 32 bits. Uh, per channel. That way um, we get a lot of image information and that's one of the special ways that, that Photoshop handles this. Uh, floating point values are used instead of just regular integers to store the image information, but more and more about that on my blog. This allows you to set your white point a little slider here. I just usually set it all the way to the right hand side good starting point, but really it almost doesn't matter where you set this. And uh, I don't have any response curves, so all I do here is hit OK. And this will basically load the file into Photoshop here. Now, 32-bit files aren't that useful. Um, you'll have issues printing and saving them and showing them off. So we will do the tonal mapping process by converting the image into 8 bits per channel. And uh, as you can see, image mode 8 bits per channel, and that brings up your HDR conversion box. And hopefully I'm not moving along too quickly here, but I want to keep the video nice and short. There are four methods for conversion. Exposure and gamma, think of exposure as your brightness and gamma as your uh, contrast. So here we have the brightness, the exposure setting, and gamma being the contrast. It's okay, very simple, but it doesn't really allow you to set anything beyond that. Highlight compression and equalize histogram are automatic. There's nothing you can set, and yeah, the results are not that great in my opinion. So we will go to local adaptation, which offers the most flexibility. Radius is basically the size of the local brightness regions. Threshold, this value, is basically the uh, tonal value between two pixels before uh, they no longer belong to the same local brightness region. But the best way to kind of show you what they do is to actually change the value. I'm going to change the radius to 100. Notice the clouds. And I'll change it to 5. And look at the clouds now. They're a little bit washed out. I prefer higher values, but really this is up to you. Same thing with Threshold. I'm just going to click the slider away over here. Um, as you can see, you get haloing the higher that Threshold value is. It uh, looks like my gazebo is glowing. I don't really like that look at all. I'm going to use the default value of 0.5. Down here now, Toning Curve and Histogram area, actually we, we now have the ability of playing around with that line here so that we can map our tones to what we prefer. I, I usually use about three or four areas on there. And the way this works is very simple. The histogram, the bottom here, the gray shades, represents your shadows, mid-tones, highlights. And these are part of the image. And this on the left-hand side is basically what you want that output value to be. So if I want a darker area to be brighter, I simply move that up. And moving the dot downwards will darken it. So I can really darken it as you can see by moving it down. And at this point, it is more or less just moving your sliders up and down here and um, finding that balance that suits your liking in the, in the picture. I won't play around with it for too long because it can take to properly do this probably about five, 10 minutes. So I'll just hit okay at this point. But as you can see, that's 
what allows you to get an overall even brightness of the image. That's actually what I aim for. I'm going to hit OK here. And it converts, uh, Photoshop is converting the image now. And like I say, I got now a very nice kind of even brightness throughout the image, but it's a bit flat. But hey, it's an 8-bit file now. So I can just go to adjustments here and play around with the settings. Sometimes if I have clouds in the picture, I will use shadows and highlights. And I will, and again, I'm being really harsh here with some of these just to speed this up, but I will darken the clouds just a bit further, which allows me then when I go to brightness and contrast to kind of make the image a little bit more punchy, um, especially when you want to brighten up the image a little bit, at least you won't blow the clouds. Now, in my case, I kind of just did this really quickly, so I do get a little bit of um, uh, highlights here that are pure white, which isn't that great, but nonetheless. Um, there we go. And as you can see, there's before, there's after. And being more careful, of course, you'll get better results. And I'll add a little bit of saturation to the picture. There we go. And I'll hit OK. And voila, you get a much better looking HDR image. So really, the process, not actually that difficult. And um, I do have more information on my blog. I will be writing a supplemental post. And here's the information on my blog, and of course, uh, just below the video in the description, you can find this link. Facebook and Twitter links are also on the blog. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe, and I certainly hope to see you for the next episode. Take care!